benefit po nung ilan sa mga bago nating kasama. We are looking at um, the book of Genesis. This is actually fourth to the last. Uh, dito po sa ating pag-aaral ng book ng Genesis. We are finishing in, in four weeks time. Ito po ang libro na to, which we have labored, I guess, for so for four years. Of course, hindi po yun um, tuloy-tuloy, but we have been uh, in Genesis, uh, the section ng ating pong uh, bawat taon and now we are by God's grace and Lord willing we will be able to finish ito pong libro na ito uh, by um, September. Uh, we would like to acknowledge yung ilan po sa mga kasama natin ngayon. Uh, Sister Gurley has been uh, with us or I mean magkasama po kami or sila Sister Allen, Krasani, Kuramel, Pasadong, uh, sa Doha. So um, just introducing her sa ilan po sa inyo, perhaps uh, sino to, di ba, nagtataka yung iba. So, um, magkakasama po kami niyan sa Doha when we were we were there and I, I believe, uh, katulad po ng kanyang sinabi kanina, siya po ay nasa, nakalimutan ko, pero Cavite, Laguna. <laughs> Laguna, o di ba? Ang daming sinabi kasi kanina, kaya nakalimutan ko na. So, yan. So, po ay nasa Laguna. And um, salamat sa Panginoon sa panahon, kapatid, na kasama ka namin. Genesis 40, Seven, yung ating pong titignan. But before we read, let me pray for us. Let me open us in prayer. Panginoon, maraming salamat, O Diyos, sa pagkakataon, Lord, na binigay niyo po sa amin to study once again on yung pong salita and matuto, Lord, sa mga sasabihin po ninyo sa amin through your word. I pray, O God, that ito pong perikopi ng kwento of Jacob's life, even his family, ay makatulong po sa amin, sa aming pangunawa, Panginoon, maging sa aming paglago, sa aming buhay, Kristiyano. Pray, Father, that you would touch hearts, Panginoon, ng mga tao na makikinig, and kayo, Panginoon, ang patuloy, Lord God, na magbago sa bawat sa amin dito, Panginoon. Let your grace, Lord, and your mercy continue to mold us into Christ's likeness. I pray this for the glory of your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm always I'm always amazed po whenever I see mga videos sa uh, sa Facebook na kung saan you would you would see Sheikh Muhammad along the mall or tumatawid po sa mga highway, di ba? Sometimes we see that and meron pong ilang mga Filipino or mga tao that are very somehow privileged to see yung pong ruler ng Dubai na uh, naglalakad and um just you know roaming around and kasama po yung kanyang perhaps kanyang mga security pero pare-parehas po sila ng ng suot di ba and hindi mo malalaman na pagka mayroong isang malaking grupo ng ng mga Arabs who are wearing yung kanila pong kandura parang usual lang and then all all of a sudden you see people um running towards them and then taking videos and apparently yun pala ay si Sheikh Muhammad di ba how pero no po ba sa inyo na naka-experience at some point ng inyong buhay dito sa Dubai to have seen ito pong mga ruler sa lugar na to, di ba? Uh, hindi ko pa po na experience. And um, it, it wouldn't hurt, di ba? Kung makita po natin sila in person. Uh, yeah, so that's very interesting, very exciting. And even it's not um, different dun sa ating pong mga um, kasama na nasa Pilipinas. Uh, you would see si Isko Moreno, yung mayor po ng Manila, who, who is... Uh, roaming around, di ba, sa kanya pong sasakyan, sa gabi, and niraradyo niya yung mga tao, magsiwi na kayo, mga ganun. But you also see him walking, and talagang may ikihalubilo sila sa mga, sa mga tao. But for most of us, it's, it's difficult to imagine kung ano po ba yung ating magiging reaksyon, ano po ba yung magiging scenario sa ating buhay if we are to be meeting ito pong most powerful man on earth. Paano po kaya tayo kikilos? Ano po kaya yung ating sasabihin? Or ano po kaya yung ating hindi sasabihin? Ito po yung scenario dito po sa uh, passage na ating pong pag-aaralan sa hapon na to. Uh, we are back with um, Joseph na at the end ng ating pong sermon last week, nagkita na po yung mag-ama. And here, Joseph knows na yung kanya pong mga kapatid, they don't have any idea as to how to address the king, how to address 
the pharaoh, the the leader of the superpower nung pong panahon na yon. And so, he had to prepare yung kanya pong mga kapatid. Now, let me go back and um, start reading from chapter 46, um, from verse 31. And ang gusto ko pong gawin natin sa hapon na to is just run through yung ating pong passage. And at the end, we will look at three um, applications for us. So Genesis 46 will begin at verses 31 hanggang 34. Sabi po dito, 46.31, just to give us a quick recap, Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, what is your occupation? You shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth, even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So nakita po natin na itong si Joseph ay hinahanda po niya both hindi lang yung kanyang mga kapatid but even Pharaoh himself para po sa kanilang initial na uh, pagkikita, sa kanilang initial encounter. Yung pong kanyang mga kapatid would not have any idea as to how, um, paano po nila i-address or kakausapin ito pong pinaka- Uh, the most powerful man, so to speak, on that ancient civilized world. So ito pong si Joseph, sinabi niya kay Pharaoh na yung kanya pong mga kapatid ay mga shepherds, sila po ay mga pastol, and inutusan din niya yung kanya mga kapatid to say the same thing. And we see yung pong reason kung bakit niya sinabi ito is given in verse 34, yung pong explanation na sila po ay mga, mga shepherds. Dahil Ito po mga Egyptian, they detest or um, kinukutsaba so to speak or they want to separate themselves sa, sa mga shepherds. They, yung kanila pong idea is that a shepherd is an abomination. And so yung pong paglagay ni Joseph sa kanyang family in the land of Goshen would make sense because the Egyptians wouldn't... Um, encounter or would it hindi po sila makikihalubilo sa mga shepherds. Joseph had initially proposed yung pong land of Goshen. If you're going to look back at chapter 45 verse 10, ay binanggit na niya to sa kanyang mga kapatid that he will bring them to land of Goshen at doon sila maninirahan. But up to this point, ay hindi pa po din decree ni Pharaoh that they will settle in the land of Goshen. But sinabi po niya sa chapter 45 verse 20, he told Joseph that the best of the land could be theirs. Yun po yung kanyang sinabi. Although here at, at, at this point, ay hindi pa po niya decree na they would stay in the land of Goshen. Ito pong abomination na ito was probably base po dun sa kanilang kostumbre sa Egypt. Uh, Um, because Egypt, marami po silang flocks and, and herds. In fact, ito pong si Pharaoh even requested si Joseph na magkaroon po ng ilang mga Israelites to look after sa kanya pong sariling livestock. We'll see that later on in verse 6 and chapter 47. But Egypt really is a plant agriculture. Yun po yung kanilang foundation ng kanilang society. Ito po mga Egyptians, they are highly skilled sa pag-organize po ng kanilang mga fields, ng kanilang mga irrigation, and even yung pong collection and storage ng kanilang mga na-harvest na pagkain. And so apparently, yung pong mga tao who spend time with animals ay consider po nila na mas mababa, perhaps even crude, compared po dun sa mga tao who take care of their crops. Kung baga, mas nakakaangat po yung mga plantita, yung mga plantito, compared po dun sa mga nagpa-farmville, so to speak. 
mga nag-aalaga po ng hayop. Yun po yung reason as to why um, it's an abomination for them. Dito po sa part na ito, we will see yung pong wisdom na meron po si Joseph. Una, he knew his brothers would need help sa kanila pong pakikipag-usap kay Pharaoh. And so, he prepares his brothers. Pangalawa, Joseph knew that yung pong mahalaga kay Pharaoh, alam po niya kung ano yung mahalaga kay Pharaoh, And he also knows, and he would want um, kung ano po yung nice ni Pharaoh for, um, from his brothers. Um, livestock ni Pharaoh is important for him. And so he wants someone to take care of his livestock. And also third, Joseph knew how to communicate ito pong message kay Pharaoh both in a truthful manner and in a discerning manner. Hindi po, wala po siyang um, ginawang lie sa kanyang pakikipag-usap kay Pharaoh. He instructed yung kanyang pong mga kapatid. He gave um, guidance as to what they're going to say. And what he said are all true. And fourthly, Joseph knew how to convince ito pong si Pharaoh of his wish para po sa kanyang pamilya to dwell in Goshen. So hindi pa po niya sinasabi kay Pharaoh that... Um, They will be in the land of Goshen, doon ko sila gusto mong ilagay, and yet he knows what to tell Pharaoh. And so as Joseph po is in the process ng pag-convince kay Pharaoh na payagan yung kanyang um, kapatid, ang kanilang pamilya to dwell in the land of Goshen, marami pong layers yung kanya pong plano. Una, he has to convince yung kanya pong pamilya of it. We see that in 45.10. Sinabihan niya yung kanyang family, yung kanyang mga kapatid, when he revealed himself that he's Joseph, their brothers, and asked them to come, bring their father, and they will settle in the land of Goshen. Ang alawa, um, the Pharaoh already had given yung pong permission para po sa kanyang pamilya to dwell in the best of the land. So wala pong particular place na binanggit. But yung pong qualification that they have the permission to dwell in the best of the land. And so nung sila po ay dumating, his family had settled in the land of Goshen nung panahon po sa chapter 47 when they met Pharaoh. Ngayon, yung pong last step sa plano ni Joseph would be to reveal kay Pharaoh yung pong occupation ng kanyang family which would give the reason or yung pong justification kung bakit po sila nasa Goshen. Because it was a place that separates them from most of the population sa Egypt. So it's ideal, it's the best of the land, that's where they can um, shepherd their flock and herds, and it separates them from the Egyptians. And so Goshen made sense para po kay Pharaoh because Joseph desired it. It was the best of the land. And nandun na po sila in the first place. And also, it kept them separate from the Egyptians. And so, alam po ni Joseph na yung pong revelation ng kanila pong profession or occupation as shepherds would persuade ito pong si Pharaoh dun sa kanya pong desire to settle yung kanya pong family In Goshen. And he also knows, he also knew that one of the first questions na itatanong po ni Pharaoh sa kanyang mga kapatid is kung ano po yung kanilang occupation. And so Joseph instructed yung kanya pong mga kapatid to describe themselves. Ano po yung ginamit niyong word? To describe themselves as servants of Pharaoh. He wanted ito pong kanyang mga kapatid to emphasize that they were shepherds and that they had always been shepherds. It's not telling a lie, it's telling the truth. But emphasizing yung pong points na would give them um, kumbaga, plus points as they argue yung pong nilang um, plan that they would settle in the land of Goshen. And then we go to chapter 47. Verse 1 and 2. Sabi po dito, So Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, My father and my brothers with their flocks and herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. They are now in the land 
of Goshen. So binabanggit na po niya kay Pharaoh na yung pong kanyang pamilya had come and sila po ngayon ay nasa land of Goshen. Now, gusto ko lang pong i-emphasize at pansinin po natin na hindi po ni request ni Joseph. Wala po siyang request kay Pharaoh na yung kanya pong pamilya would settle in the land of Goshen. He merely follows yung pong instructions ni Pharaoh which allows them to settle in the best of the land. And it allowed Pharaoh to come to a conclusion that it is best for them to stay there. Because sinusunod lang po niya yung command ni Pharaoh to bring his family from Canaan to Egypt and settle them in the best of the land and doon sila nilagay doon sila nilagay ni Joseph and so nandun yung conclusion in Pharaoh's mind that Goshen is the best place for them to stay and then in verse 2 and from among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh now sino po itong five brothers at bakit po five yung kanyang kinuhang mga kapatid to pre- to be presented to Pharaoh hindi po natin alam so kung tatanungin po ninyo ako, wala po akong sagot kung sino. Kung bakit po ilan, I don't have an idea. The Bible doesn't tell us that. Hindi po na-reveal sa atin. And it means that we don't need to know. The text does not record kung sino po itong five na to and bakit po lima yung kanyang pinili. We don't have an answer to that. And then verses 3 onwards, it says, Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? Here comes the question. This is the first question that he asked dun po sa kanyang mga kapatid. What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, your servants, your servants are shepherds as our fathers were. Verse 4, they said to Pharaoh, we have come to sojourn in the land for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. And now, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Now, here comes the request, which is requested ng kanya pong mga kapatid. I want you to note yung pong kanilang ginamit dito. They said, we have come to sojourn in the land. Yung pong word na sojourn, it carries yung pong idea of um, dwelling in an unspecified or temporary time without permanent residence, so to speak. Isa kang sojourner. Hindi ka, hindi ka talaga taga dito, but you're a sojourner. Merong, wala pong, it's a temporary time, it's a, perhaps a short period of time. In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham is said to sojourn in Egypt because of the famine. And he, he did not stay in Egypt because he was just a sojourner. And then they used a different word as they moved on. They said in the last part of verse 4, And now please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. So they used the word sojourn and they used the word dwell. Manirahan. So merong silang temporary residence so to speak. And then in verse 5 and 6, it says, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brother in the best of the land. Let them settle in the land of Goshen. And if you know any able men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. Here, Pharaoh is giving approval dun po sa kanilang request to live and settle in the land of Goshen. Joseph's plan worked to perfection. Yung ginamit po doon, ang sinabi po ni Pharaoh, settle your father in the land. Let them settle in the land of Goshen. Yung kanila pong permission that has been granted by Pharaoh is for them to dwell in the land and to live in Goshen. So we see here, even yung pong choice of words na binanggit po ni Pharaoh, 
uh, it suggests na ito pong si Pharaoh has invited them to stay indefinitely in the land. Wala pong restrictions at this point. And so here, even though yung pong mga shepherds, sila as shepherds, they were an abomination to the Egyptians, alam po ni Pharaoh that he needed ito pong mga taong to. And so Pharaoh instructed Joseph na pumili po ng best among his brothers to shepherd yung pong flock ni Pharaoh. Now, this is an interesting command by Pharaoh to Joseph. Ano po yung sinabi niya? And if you know any able men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. If you know any able men, kung si, kumbaga, sino po ba yung capable sa kanyang mga kapatid or, or from these people who comes from, who's coming from Canaan who is now in Egypt, kung sino yung able at capable sa kanila, let them, let them take care of my flock, of my herd, sabi ni Pharaoh. It's interesting because I don't think Joseph would have any idea kung sino po sa kanyang mga kapatid ang able. Sino po sa kanila yung may capability to take care. Because Joseph has been gone for more than two decades. But apparently, implicitly, dun po sa command ni Pharaoh is meron pong trust sa judgment nitong si Joseph. And so yung po yung scenario ng pagtatagpo ni Pharaoh at nung kanyang mga kapatid. And then we have from verse 7 onwards, we have a different meeting. It's a meeting between Pharaoh and Joseph's father, Jacob. Verse 7, sabi po dito, Then Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and stood him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So ko pong inote niyo yung sentence na yun. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Verse 8, And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of my years, the days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. And they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their sojourning. Verse 10, And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Doon po sa mga kapatid ni Joseph, yung interest po ni Pharaoh is with their occupation. But with the father of Joseph, yung interest po ni Pharaoh is with his age. Somehow this reflects yung pong value that the Egyptian society has placed on age. Doon po sa kanilang respeto and honor for the elderly. Somehow it's the same sa panahon po natin ngayon, di po ba? It's common for people to ask doon po sa mga tao who are in the middle of their career about their job. But with more senior adults, yung ating pong interest would lean towards how old they are. And sinabi po ni Jacob dun po sa question that he was 130 years old. And yet he also says na yung kanya pong buhay is not the same. It's not as long as the fathers, yung kanya pong mga um, uh, forefathers. Why? Because we know Abraham lived 175 years. We know that in Genesis 25.7. Yung kanya pong tatay, si Isaac, lived more than Abraham, lived for 180 years. So yung kanya pong edad na 130 is way shorter than the life of Abraham na kanya pong lolo and Isaac, his father. He is well aware na yung kanya pong lifespan, yung kanya pong buhay, at that point ay shorter than his father's. Perhaps, that also suggests yung pong kanyang sagot kay Pharaoh that ito pong si Jacob was thinking na yung pong amount ng oras that he had left sa kanyang buhay is short. But in 
chapter 47, verse 28, makita po natin that Jacob lived 17 years in Egypt. So in total, kung nakita po sila and first time yung nasa Egypt, at 130, we add 17 years that he lived in Egypt, so siya po ay nabuhay, namatay at the age of 147. Now again, binanggit ko po kanina at the end of verse 7, so take note dun po sa, sa phrase that says, Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And then in verse 10, we see that Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So twice that Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So after pong i-work out nung kanyang mga kapatid, yung pong kanilang living arrangement, here comes Joseph bringing his father Jacob and presenting him before Pharaoh. And yung pong statement that says, Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Ano po yung ibig sabihin nun? One commentator says, to bless someone is to endure with power for success, prosperity, and longevity. So it's as if Jacob blessing Pharaoh for long life, for success, sa kanyang binagawa. But what is important here is that blessing is usually conveyed from the greater to the lesser. Ang nagbibless po palagi is someone who is greater in blessing the lesser. For example, a father to a son or a king to his subject. Jacob here expresses faith dun po sa pangako ng Diyos and acted on that promise that all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and through your offspring. Now, hindi po malinaw. Um, it's unclear kung naintindihan po ba ni Pharaoh yung magnitude nung pong ginawang blessing ni Jacob sa kanya or even yung pong religious undertones ng being blessed by Jacob. It could be just a greeting para po kay Pharaoh, but for Jacob, it was more than a greeting. I'm sure that he knows the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 14. Na kung saan, after the fight between um, uh, four kings against five nung kinuha po si Lot and then they tried to get back ito pong, um, ito pong mga kinuhang mga tao they fought and then on their way back meron pong figure that came out and sinalubong po si Abraham at yung kanya pong mga kasama and brought bread and wine to be refreshments para po kay Abraham at dun po sa kanyang mga kasama and what did Abraham do? Abraham gave a tenth. Nagbigay po siya ng tithe dito po sa, sa figure na ito. And ang ginawa po nitong figure na ito, nitong priest of God Most High, is that he blessed Abraham. And dito pong tao na to is none other than the king of Salem, Melchizedek. Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. And yung pong figure na yon, arguing in the book of Hebrews that yung pong priestly order of Melchizedek is greater than the Levitical order, in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7, sinabi po doon, the lesser, in this case Abraham, is blessed by the greater. And so doon po sa tagpo na yon, that Melchizedek blessing Abraham, it shows na si Melchizedek po, yung tao who blesses, is greater than Abraham who is being blessed. Now, the fact po that Jacob blessed Pharaoh and Pharaoh accepted yung pong blessing suggests that perhaps meron pong significance or understanding dun po sa significance ni Jacob sa kanya pong role, sa kanya pong family. We see as Christians reading scripture at this side of the cross, we understand that indeed this man of God, this Jacob, 
is indeed greater than the greatest man on earth. Is greater than Pharaoh. And then in verses 11 and 12, sabi po dito, Then Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food according to the number of their dependents. We see here the Israelites have settled in Egypt. Actually, ito pong two verses na to could just be the summary nung pong settling ng family ni Jacob in Egypt. And we even see na ito pong si Joseph as the initiator and provider para po sa kanyang family. And they were given the best of the land as Pharaoh had promised. And then meron pong interesting name na binanggit po at the end of verse 11. It says, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses. Ito pong Ramses, just for the information ng lahat po, is that it identifies ito pong location ng Goshen and somehow foreshadows yung pong building projects in Ramses. If we will go fast forward to Exodus chapter 1 verse 11, and in chapter 12, verse 37, makikita po natin doon na yung pong mga building projects nung bagong Pharaoh that enslaved Israel is happening in this place called Ramses. So it's where most of the people of Israel are living. So ito po yung reason that led Israel's departure from Egypt. And then in verse 13, we see yung pong sitwasyon in Egypt. It says there, Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of the famine. But I want us to jump a bit dito po sa Verse 27, it says there, Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it and were fruitful and multiplied greatly. So from, from verses 11 and 12, nakita po natin doon that as Joseph settled his father and his brother, he gave them possessions in the land of Egypt, they got the best in the land, um, Joseph provided for his family, his brothers and fathers, and all their dependent, dependents. And then in verse 27, it tells us the same thing. They gained possession. They were fruitful, multiplied greatly. Ito pong dalawang verses na binanggit ko dito, 27 and yung pong 11 and 12. Sandwiches, kung ano po yung nangyayari sa Egypt. If we're going to read from verses 13 hanggang 26, we would see yung pong condition ng Egypt. It's a total opposite nung pong nangyayari sa mga Israelites in Goshen and dito po sa nangyayari sa mga pitao sa Egypt. It, it shows us a difference nung pong circumstances para sa pamilya ni Jacob in Goshen and the conditions in the land of Egypt. There is no food in the land. Literally, wala pong bread in all the land of Egypt. And yung pong extent nito pong famine covered hindi lang Egypt but even Canaan. And then in verses 14 hanggang 19, it says, And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan in exchange for the grain that they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? For our money is gone. And Joseph answered 
give your livestock and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock if your money is gone. 17. So they brought their livestock to Joseph and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the herds, and the donkeys. He supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. And when that year was ended, natapos na po yung taon na yon, when they exchanged yung kanilang mga hayop, they went back, they came to him the following year and said to him, we will not hide from my Lord that our money is all spent. The herds of our livestock are my Lord's. Binigay na namin sa iyo in, 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 in payment for, for grain. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Verse 19, why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, and we with our land will be servants to Pharaoh and give us seed that we may live and not die and that the land may not be desolate. We see here, yung pong kalunos-lunos na pinagdadaanan ng mga tao in Egypt for two years. And the famine is going on for seven years. It's a total opposite of what's happening in the people of Israel in Goshen. And the people here in Egypt. So Joseph gathered lahat po ng pera and even all the livestock in the land of Egypt. They came to Joseph to buy food. He presented lahat po ng pera into Pharaoh's house. So in a sense, through Joseph, Pharaoh is being blessed. Yung pong tiwala na iginawad ni Pharaoh kay, kay Joseph has been so significant. Wala pong hint dun po sa kanilang conversations, wala pong any, any shadow ng oversight na ginawa po si Pharaoh doon po sa mga decisions ni Joseph or any of his financial advisors kung meron man. He seems to be solely responsible doon po sa collection ng pera. And so the text would seem to present ito pong pangangailangan ng mga tao year after year. Una they, they bought food gamit yung kanilang pera the next year. Nung ubos na po yung kanilang pera, they, they have sold yung kanilang pong livestock, yung kanilang pong cattle in exchange for food for the next year. And in the following year, nung wala na rin po silang pera, wala na po silang mga alagang hayop, Joseph purchased their land in exchange for food for the next year. Now, dun po sa pagbili ni Joseph ng kanilang mga hayop, it was a proposition that came from Joseph. But yung pong pagbenta ng kanilang sarili at ng kanila pong lupa, it is a proposal that came from the people themselves. And then in verses 20 and 22, it still talks about the famine being so severe. It says, so Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh for all the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe on them. The land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made servants of them from one end of Egypt to another. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, for the priests had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh and lived on the allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. Three times na po in this chapter, the, the, the narrator has told us that the famine is severe. Ito pong unusual nature ng famine had brought Israel to Egypt. But hindi lang po yun. Hindi lang po dumating yung pong family ni Joseph from, from Canaan to Egypt. But also, this famine had made the Egyptians become poor. They have been impoverished by the famine. And as we have read, it made them slaves to Pharaoh. And what Joseph did, what did he do? He relocated ito pong mga tao na to. He perhaps placed people in key cities in Egypt from one end of Egypt to another, sabi po dyan. So in a sense, yung, kanya pong, yung role ni Joseph has expanded from administrating yung kanila pong pagkain hanggang sa 
redistribute yung pong population ng Egypt. From one end of Egypt to another. It, it suggests yung pong extent ng responsibilidad nito pong si Joseph and even yung pong magnitude ng famine. But of course, as we have read, hindi po kasama dun sa kanyang biniling lupa yung pong land ng mga priests. And then in verses 23 hanggang 26, we'll see something interesting which is the imposition of tax for the people. 23, Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have this day bought you and your land for Pharaoh. Now here is seed for you and you shall sow the land. And at the harvest, you shall give a fifth, 20%, to Pharaoh, and four-fifths shall be your own, as seed for the field, and as food for yourselves and your households, and as food for your little ones. And they said, you have saved our lives. May it please, my Lord, we will be servants to Pharaoh. Verse 26, so Joseph made it a statute concerning the land of Egypt. And it stands to this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth. The land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. So as the people offered yung anila pong sarili to Pharaoh in exchange for food, but it was Joseph who designed and implemented yung pong plan. Nag-provide po si Joseph ng seed for the people upang sila po ay makapag, makapag-farm ng kanilang lupa. And he imposed 20% tax on all the produce ng land. It's interesting that yung pong binanggit ng mga Egyptians, this Egyptians, ito pong mga tao from Egypt, is telling this Hebrew guy, the former slave, they tell him, you have saved our lives. The people recognized yung pong magnitude ng kanilang sitwasyon. And without Joseph's assistance, they would not have survived. In a sense, this foreshadows another Hebrew who came out of Egypt who provided salvation for the people. And yung pong Hebrew na yon could be Moses who brought the people out of Egypt, but I believe there is one other Hebrew who is greater than Moses, who has brought people out of slavery and provided salvation for the people, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 26, sinasabi po doon, for a second time, yung pong exemption that has been granted to the priest, yung kanila pong lupa were not sold to Pharaoh, and presumably, kung wala pong binentang lupa, they were not taxed well. Now, ito pong passage na ating binasa. We'll, we'll end it here hanggang 28. So I will leave um, 29 dun po sa susunod na magpipreach to include yung pong last days nito pong si Jacob. But what we see here so far sa ating pong tinignan is that it reveals the people who were blessed by Joseph. Yung kanya pong family, yung pong mga tao in Egypt, Pharaoh himself and even the whole kingdom of Egypt. Meron pong ipinamalas na wisdom si Joseph in, in dealing with people sa kanya pong mga kapatid, sa kanyang tatay, and even with Pharaoh himself. In, in a sense, he's influencing them to make good decisions. Nagpamalas po siya ng wisdom in planning ahead, in making decisions in dealing with crises, in handling yung kanila pong resources, and also in demonstrating yung kanya pong integrity. So let me close with three points of application for us. Number one is we should seek the Lord to raise up wise leaders. We should seek the Lord to raise up wise leaders. Ultimately, yung wisdom po nitong si Joseph by God's grace had saved two nations. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 says, By wisdom a house is built, 
and by understanding it is established. It's the same para po sa ating families and even para po sa ating nation. Uh, ating pong bansa, Philippines, will be undergoing yung ating pong election next year and by October, uh, isang magulo at masayang mga balita na naman ang ating pong masasaksihan. Even as early as now, we are hearing and uh, watching news about what's happening in our government. And so let's seek the Lord to raise up wise leaders for us. Because ito pong leaders who are wise that have been given wisdom by God can impact a nation. Wise leaders demonstrate discernment sa kanila pong pakikipag, um, pakikipag-deal sa mga tao. They also demonstrate dependability sa kanila pong um, paglutas sa mga problema natin. Problema that we are currently facing right now. It would also demonstrate wisdom sa kanila pong decision and even, most importantly, integrity sa lahat po ng kanilang ginagawa. So let us pray and seek that the Lord would raise up wise leaders for us. Even for our family, that yung ating pong mga anak that we are raising up, let's ask that God would raise them up to be wise leaders. For the fathers in the family, ask God to give you wisdom. Which brings us to the second point, we should pray for wisdom in our own lives. We should pray for wisdom in our own lives. Ipanalangin po natin that we might learn to be wise sa ating pong mga sariling problema, in our own decisions, in our own crises. James chapter 1, verses 2 hanggang 5, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Maging, um, maging joyful po tayo. Let's count it as joy kung meron po tayong pagsubok na kinahaharap. And then it says in verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom. Now, I want to say na ito pong context ng if any of you lacks wisdom is not an isolated thing. It hinges dun po sa um, previous statements that you count it joy when you meet trials of various kinds. And as you meet trials of various kinds, you ask God for wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, Let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. Let's pray that the Lord will give us discernment sa ating pong pakikitungo sa ibang tao. It may be sa kapwa natin sa church, may it be sa ating mga boss who have been unfair to us, sa ating pong mga employer, kung saan man po tayo nangamasukan, in our friends, in people surrounding us, in our family, in our circumstances, let's ask God that He would grant us discernment. I need discernment. I have been talking to people in the church, telling what's in my heart, and I would need wisdom kung paano ko po i-open itong mga bagay na ito sa inyo. Joseph's wisdom in one area has given Pharaoh confidence na siya po ay capable in many other areas. So let's ask God for wisdom. And lastly, let us recognize, or we should recognize the wisdom of God's plan for our lives. Let us recognize yung pong wisdom ng plano ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Let us remember that God brought Israel to Egypt. And it was also God who provided for His people. And not only that, Egypt was blessed bilang resulta po ng blessing ng Diyos sa kanyang people. God is blessing Joseph. And so Egypt is blessed through God's people. Now I want to say na pwedeng it could not make sense. It might not have made sense para po kay Jacob or sa kanya pong pamilya yung reason to reside or to move to Egypt. But God was planning it 
long in advance. Pwede, it doesn't make sense now to move to Egypt, but God is planning it long in advance. And ito pong nangyaring move to Egypt is a precursor, it's a foreshadowing nung pong deliverance that God will do for Israel. Hosea 11.1 When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Nung pinalaya po ng Diyos ang kanyang people, Israel, out of Egypt. Which also foreshadows a greater exodus as we will see in the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And ito pong kanilang pagpunta sa Egypt, also it's to show, it foreshadows yung pong ultimate deliverance for all who trust in God. In Egypt, for, for four centuries, they will, after four centuries, they will, be, they will be enslaved. But yung kanila pong slavery is a foreshadowing of a freedom, of a deliverance, of a liberation that God would grant His people. And that points us ultimately to the freedom, liberation, and deliverance that the Lord Jesus Christ had given us. One day, lahat po ng tao who have been saved by God in Christ will rejoice and say, as chapter 47 verse 25, You have saved our lives. Mga kapatid, if we are listening to this and we desire to be free. There is no other solution than putting your faith in Christ. Repent of your sins and trust Christ to save you. And I long for us to all say that you, Christ Jesus, have saved our lives. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you, Panginoon, sa hapon na to. Thank you, God, for teaching us, telling us that freedom is only found in your salvific work through the Lord Jesus Christ. And even, Panginoon, yung pong aming need for wisdom. God, in humility, we ask that you would grant us wisdom sa lahat po ng aming dealings with people, with our circumstances. I pray, Father, that sa bawat problema na meron po kami, trials and tribulations, decisions that we have to make, we pray, O oh God, that we would decide with the wisdom na ikagawad po ninyo sa amin. And aming pong desire, Panginoon, is that as we make these decisions, Ito po ay naayon sa inyong nais and it would be for the glory of your name. Father, I pray for each and every one of us here na nakikinig, nakinig Panginoon ng iyong salita, ng iyong um, ng sermon, Father. I pray that you would grow us in our faith and learn from the life of Joseph. Although hindi pa po kami tapos, Panginoon, we still have um, more um, weeks to come studying this, studying his life. I pray, Panginoon, that all the things na aming pong narinig, Panginoon, even from before, I would cause us to love you more and to give glory to your name. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.